Hello my friends, I'm Rich Larson and I'm the IRC Tire Guy and today we have another technique breakdown for you guys. These techniques came to mind after careful consideration of an interesting question that was poised to me from a fellow rider. That question was, if I could only practice three techniques, what would they be? This is a really hard question and it really bounced around in my head for a while. I couldn't immediately name the top three techniques I would only practice, but it got me thinking, and that's why we're doing today's episode. The beauty of hard enduro is you can draw parallels to any technique from any other single technique. So for example, improving your balance will help with your double blip. Your increased balance will give you a more controlled approach and execution. Learning the ability to slow wheelie will help you improve your balance. It will also help improve your throttle and clutch control, your rear brake control, and help your ability to balance on different accesses, up and down, as well as side to side, which will also help your execution of any obstacle, right? So I'm sure there are countless other parallels that I could draw from one technique to another. But the point is, every technique has a parallel to another technique. Some techniques have more parallels than others. So to me, this is a conversation of which techniques have the highest number of parallels to other techniques. Of course, it all depends on your skill level and the style of writing that you do. So my personal top three may be different than yours. So I decided today to break down the top three beginner techniques that I would recommend practicing and mastering. Then in the next episode, I'll break down my personal top three more advanced drills and techniques. Now let's start off with the technique that has the highest number of parallels parallels to other techniques. This is something I use in most every technique that I perform. Whether that be technical riding or high speed riding, your proper body position is imperative. There is a reason why every motocross, off-road, or hard enduro teacher talks about body position. The fact is, there really is only one way to ride a motorcycle at its highest efficiency. The modern motorcycle is designed in a way to truthfully be the ultimate mold of man and machine. The best way to get the highest performance out of your machine is proper form in all facets. Now, if you've watched this channel, you've definitely heard the term unlocked hips. Your ability to use your weight to react to what your machine is doing really depends on your loose unlocked hips. Think of how most of the weight on your machine is centered as a whole. That's how your machine works at the highest efficiency. You also are most efficient by centering your weight in the center of your body or at your hips and core. Practicing proper body position is the first step to success in any facet of motorcycle riding. Focusing on riding on the balls of your feet, elbows up, and riding with those unlocked and hinged hips will give you the highest likelihood of success. Notice on any technique that I'm performing, the movement in my hips. My weight distribution all depends on where my hips are going. Simply put, if you want the front end in the air, my hips move back. If you want my front end down, they move forward. I'm reacting to what my machine is doing via my hips. Now, for the next technique, I'm sure you guys have seen me talk ad nauseum about the importance of your ability to static balance. Of course, the parallels that can be drawn to other techniques that required a mastered sense of balance are endless. The better you are at keeping your feet on the pegs in all situations, the better you will get through all situations. Quickly, let's go over the easiest way to learn static balance. When first learning the technique, I'd say start with the bike off. Always practice on a downhill slant to help compress your suspension. A lower center of gravity equals easier balance. If needed, dig a slight hole for your front tire. This will assist your balance from left to right. Learn how to keep your suspension compressed before you've even moved up onto the pegs. Usually this is done by weighting the foot that is on the peg first before your other foot has left the ground. Then slowly bring both feet onto the pegs. Remember, you can use the action and reaction of your front tire to correct your balance. So when you fall to the right, turn to the right. When you fall to the left, 
turn to the left. This is pushing your front tire into that hole you dug and correcting your balance in the opposite direction. The corrections are meant to be small. You don't want big movements. Once you get to the point where you can balance with your tires in a hole, simply practice without the hole. Again, the beauty of these techniques is to practice them a hundred different ways. If you really want to master static balance, practice it every time you stop on your trail rides. Do it in different situations. Bike on, bike off, uphill, downhill, off camber. There's really no limit to how you can practice. That's what it takes when trying to master any technique. Next, let's talk clutch control. I'd say for all you beginners learning how to be comfortable with that clutch engagement point is imperative, especially in those hardened girl situations. Learning how to feather that clutch around the engagement point really is the difference between you being able to hold traction or not. It's the difference between you finding that needed momentum at a moment's notice. And most importantly, it's where most of your control comes from when we say the term throttle and clutch control. I've said this before, but in hard enduro, when the term throttle and clutch control gets thrown around, in my opinion, it's not 50-50. It's more like 75% clutch control. And really, that may be on the conservative side. Practicing simple drills like rolling back and forth on an incline and only using your clutch control and engine to slow you down, no brakes, is a great way to find if your clutch control skills are lacking. The goal in most hard and durable situations is to use the least amount of throttle as possible. This way, you're putting the efficient traction to the ground. When practicing any clutch control or engagement drills, Make sure to use the least amount of throttle possible. I'd rather you kill your engine than spin your tires. Also, if you have more of a tendency to kill your bike, this is a sign that you need to improve on your clutch control skills. The beauty of riding a motorcycle is there are literally hundreds of different ways to practice one technique, an unlimited number of obstacles, and an unlimited number of ways to hit that one obstacle. Really, this isn't limiting yourself to only three techniques. It's taking three techniques and practicing them thousands of different ways. I always say, if you can hit one one obstacle 100 different ways in practice, there's a better chance that you can hit any obstacle one way when it matters. I hope you guys are enjoying the channel, and if you are, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at IRCMoto, and my personal Instagram page at RichLarson511, and until next time, keep shredding.